Well, I'm up on the top of the platform again for the atmospheric chemistry platform. But I'll give you a look inside of this. So this is this interesting cube that hangs out over the side of uh, the building. It's a bit of an architectural uh, something with the UAW logo up on it. I'll take a shot of this cube um, from down the bottom. But we have up on the top, as you may have seen, an astronomical dome. And this isn't to do with the um, atmospheric chemistry group that I'm a part of. This is part of physics. So one of my hobbies is astronomy. And I have a um, observatory in my backyard, which I'll post some videos of soon. But this is inside that cube. Ah. And for some strange reason, they've decided that we need to lock this door. But I'll just log off and get the key. And so I've opened this door and we come out onto a, a platform in the top. And here's the astronomical dome. So we've got a very, very good horizon for this place, like for Wollongong. So if we open this little door here, and we come into here, we have a telescope that we're working on setting up. So this plinth is connected to the building. So if we go back out under here, That is a concrete plinth, that pipe there is a concrete plinth that actually beds onto the roof of the building and comes up into the observatory. So you can see there's the top of the pipe, this concrete block. We need to have something to hang that off better, anyway. So we have this telescopic mount bolted. So this is pointed very carefully, pointed due south. We have this anti-vibration plate, which we're not sure whether it's working properly or not yet. But this was specifically, there's a place in America that builds these. So we provided the weight that we were expecting to have on this. And these are heavy sprung coils that wind down on each side and allows this to float. At the moment this is locked so that that's out of action. But, um, that's to remove high frequency oscillation that we might see in the building. Now this particular building was designed from the ground up. So over there on the bottom level down there, which you can't quite see, but that's where the microscopes are housed. And there's an exclusion zone around this building. The vehicles can't come inside so that they don't vibrate the uh, microscopes because they are measuring at such a fine level that a car driving past could potentially corrupt the measurement so but interestingly all the plant and equipment for air conditioning and so forth are over in that building over there on the roof of that wing and there is a bridge going across you can see there between the two halves of this building 
And they did this to isolate that building from the lift, which the lift, well, one of the lifts comes up inside of this breakout. Interesting, they built that extra level of the um, lift to allow us to get to this platform, which was excellent, because over in the other building, it's an absolute nuisance. So, this building has been built to incredible standards to reduce vibration. So we're not seeing any evidence. We actually had people from physics set up monitors on this pier and run the lift and uh, 3D accelerometers looking for any vibration. We're not seeing it. But, oh yes, yeah, so what we have here, let's climb up this ladder. This is a schmidt cassegrain telescope. So there's a corrector plate underneath the front here. That, that's the covers on there, um, just to protect it. And uh, there's a mirror down at this end. And there's a secondary mirror up here. So the light comes in the front, goes down to the back onto the main mirror, then onto the secondary mirror, and then comes out the back. And then there's a small refracting telescope on the top. Not uh, not as impressive, but very good for wide field uh, photography and observing. But uh, we're in the process of commissioning this. So this whole dome, that's a shutter there that will open. This, sh this shutter here is really poorly designed. There's only one motor over here that opens the whole thing and opens it from the bottom and this whole thing flops around. So the whole point of this is to be able to run this observatory. There's going to be a computer. We have still haven't got the computer, but we've got little breakouts here. There's going to be a computer here that's permanently installed to run this. And we should be able to log on to that computer and then operate this telescope from off-site. But it's, uh, yes, as I said, we're commissioning it at the moment. And the other night, I didn't get here due to a mix-up, but um, they put a camera, actually a current camera, not unlike this camera, but a model up, I think. One of the guys from the astronomy club that I've been part of brought his camera in. And this is for, this is, uh, for planetary photography. And uh, that was put in here and a shot of um, Jupiter, they took a shot of Jupiter and they got quite a good shot but the um, image of the uh, planet was shaking around, I mean this has got a lot of magnification, I think it's got a three and a half metre focal length um, which means that we we're pushing up around 500 times magnification so anything that's not right is going to show up like that, but it should be better than that. And I've got a two and a half meter focal length uh, telescope at home, and I've done some planetary stuff, and the image was much more stable on mine. So we're not sure yet what's going on there. Um, there's another little telescope here. It's got a guide camera. So this this whole this is a German equatorial mount. So this axis here points directly at the celestial pole. There's a camera mounted inside of here. There's a camera here. And there's a software package that you take a shot with that camera and it checks the star field and uh, the star pattern of what the celest south celestial pole looks like is all obviously known. So that the star field is compared and you can drive this on to get this pointed very precisely at the South Celestial Pole. But if you're doing long exposures of 15 minutes or so, which you need for galaxies and nebula, faint nebula, you, you can't rely on this by pointing at the South Celestial Pole, this whole thing just rotates on this axis. 
And wherever you point this, if you rotate this at one rev per sidereal day, which that's, there's a four minute difference between a day looking at the stars and a day looking at the sun, and that's because we move around the sun a degree a day, so we have to rotate 361 degrees to go from the sun being at zenith or overhead and back to the same position because we've moved around the sun during that time. Um, whereas the stars are far enough away that 360 degrees actually gets us pointed back at the same spot of the sky. So if you rotate this one revolution per sidereal day, uh, it will just follow the stars. And if everything's perfectly aligned, that's all you need to track the sky. But in reality, nothing's perfect. So we have a second camera here. That's a small telescope, which is good for guiding with this small 600mm focal length telescope. But it's not, we would use this to guide the big telescope. Um, I won't go into the reasons why, but that's the way it works. And you plug the um, camera in here and it connects to the computer and that allows the computer to make it fine adjustments to the pointing of the telescope. So you select a star and it'll follow that star using the second camera. But we're in the process of getting this all running and it's not fully operational yet. We've also got trouble. This focus here is very messy. It's not well. This, this telescope, the big schmidt cassegrain we got for nothing from a research institute down in Melbourne. This was used on another instrument called LIDAR for a long time and they retired the LIDAR and this was just not needed anymore. So we were asked if we wanted it by the people in Melbourne and we said yes and as it turns out it looks like it's a good telescope um, but we're going to put it into a uh, workshop or astronomy shop for a service and I think we'll be getting this focus fixed. This bit here, the fine focuser, that is for coarse focus moving the mirror and this is just a fine focus um, that lets you get finer focus onto the object. But we're getting an electric version of this, but this is one of mine from home. I just brought it in because they didn't have one and I've loaned it to them for the moment. Um, my telescope at home, I've got an electric motor adapter to the focusing on this telescope and I've got an electronic focuser on my 10 inch Schmidt Cassegrain. But anyway, this is another project I'm doing in my spare time, such as I have spare time. But uh, this is kind of fun because this is out of my price range. This, uh, this pier I think was $8,000 or something. And that mount was a similar sort of price. Uh, and I don't have that much money to uh, chuck at toys at home. But it uh, means I get to play with the toys here. And uh, as you see, I have access to this space. So if I want to use this, I can. Yeah, but we're, we're just going through the fairly long and drawn out and kind of fun and kind of annoying at times process of getting this whole thing commissioned so that we can start doing some proper astronomy with it. Anyway, that's my update for this week. Bye. So here's the uh, external view of that cube and there's the dome up the top that we were just in. And there's the um, wing that our lab is. And our lab is behind this window 
Uh, can I find the camera there? This window here is our lab, lab that long horizontal one at the top. And there's a bridge between the two buildings. So this bottom floor over here has got the new microscopes in it and that's quite a quite a thing there's no metal in the foundations they dug out all the dirt on the bottom to a meter and a half or something and filled it with uh, screened material with no magnetic signature because the uh, microscopes are affected by the magnetic signature and um, it's like a concrete monolith inside of there with all of this concrete with nylon Rio in it and you can see that between the two buildings there's this glass bridge and it's vibrationally isolated apparently so that anything that happens over here like the lift moving doesn't affect anything over here with the microscopes but this whole area is um, I mean we do get a little bit of traffic down that road but for our, t our telescope, that's not going to be... I don't think that's going to be a problem. So this building should be pretty stable. So we're still trying to work out whether it's the building that's vibrating, whether it's causing the image to jiggle around of uh, Jupiter the other night, or whether it's something in our new mount or something like that. But yes, this is the new $88 million or whatever it was, Molecular Horizon building. And there's laboratories all up through here. And we have that window up there. It's I think is the only laboratory in this in this side. There's a conference room and there's a few bits and bobs, but basically our lab's the only one. And we got it over there. It was originally going to be on this corner over here, but they moved it over here so that we wouldn't get shade from all that building up on the top. Uh, all of the compressor room and everything. But yes, it's all rather impressive. You can see our, oh, maybe you can see, there's our, in the shape, our weather station just peeking out at the top there. So, I might be able to get, I know James that runs this microscope lab. Um, behind here, this is all very fancy now, and you, all these fancy seats with power and USB and stuff on the ends of them, and, but inside of here, behind this translucent sort of skin on the outside, inside of there there's an x-ray crystallography machine and then in behind in there behind that is the uh, microscopes